In section 3.3, we will talk about dot plots and also about discrete and continuous variables. So let's talk about discrete variables. A discrete variable is a variable that has gaps between successive possible values. Uh, here's basically what it means. A discrete variable, um, it, it can't take on all possible values in between two. For example, um, if I count the number of free throws I make, okay, if, I, if I count the number of free throws I make, I can make zero free throws, I can make one free throw, I can make two free throws, I can make three or four or five, etc., etc. But I can't make 5.8 free throws. I can't make 6.7 free throws. So there are gaps between possible values. It can be zero or one or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine, but I can't make 0 0.3 or 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 free throws. So there's a gap between these. Usually discrete variables are variables that can only be written as counting numbers. Okay, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc., etc. So usually discrete variables can only be written as counting numbers. On the other hand, a continuous variable is a variable that can take on any value between two possible values. Uh, and, and again, the, the, the keyword here is it can take on, like it's, it's possible. Um, so for example, um, if I'm going to go around and um, measure the uh, measure the lengths of people's fingers. Okay, so just as an example. Okay, so can, can someone's finger be three inches long? Yes. Can it be 3.4 inches long? Yes. Can it be 3.2 inches long? Yes. If I measure it really accurately, can it be 3.194 inches long? Yes. Can it be 3.19465 inches long? Yes. So as you can see, when you talk about something like measuring a length, you're not limited by just counting numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3. You, you can have decimals. And because you can have decimals, you can take on any value between 3 and 3.4, like 3.2. You can take on any value between 3 and 3.2, like 3.194. So usually, when you can have decimals, those variables are continuous. Okay, here are some examples. Um, identify whether the variable is discrete or continuous. The amount of time in seconds it takes a person to run 100 meters. All right, well, let's think about this. Can we have decimals? Is it possible? Okay, so are decimal values possible in this case? In this case, yeah, they are possible because uh, a person could run the 100 meters in 10 seconds, they can run it in 9.8 seconds, uh, they can run it in 9.9 .9 seconds. So notice that you can take on any value between these two numbers. They can run it in 9.895 seconds if you measure more accurately. So yeah, absolutely. Um, it, is, uh, it is possible to have decimals, so therefore it is a continuous variable. Here's the answer um, written out. The time in seconds it takes a person to run the 100 is continuous variable because a variable can take on any value, decimal or otherwise, uh, between two possible values. For example, not only are 10 and 11 seconds possible times, but you can also have 10.59329, um, etc., etc. So whenever decimals are possible, it is continuous. The number of times a person has traveled to the Grand Canyon. Okay, so I can go zero times to the Grand Canyon. I can go once, I can go twice, I can go three times. Can I go 1.5 times to the Grand Canyon? No, like I either went or I didn't. Can I go 2.8 times to the Grand Canyon? Nope, I either went or I didn't. So because the only possibilities are counting numbers, this is going to be discrete. Okay, and then this will be continuous. So here's the written out answer for that. Uh, the number of times a person has traveled to the Grand Canyon is discrete variable because there are gaps between successive values. So between 0 and 1, there's a gap. You can't have 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. 1 and 2, there's a gap because you can't have 1.5 or 1.6. So um, again, a person cannot travel to the Grand Canyon 3.2 times. Therefore, this is uh, a discrete variable. So remember, counting numbers discrete. If there are possible decimals, it's going to be continuous. 
All right, uh, here's some more examples. The number of texts a person sends from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. on a particular night. So can you send 100 texts? Yeah. Can you send 100.1 texts? No. Because decimals are not possible, this is going to be discrete. There are gaps between possible values. So 100, 101, there's a gap. Nothing in between is a possible value. The radius of a car tire. Can a radius be 30 inches? Yep. Can it be 30.2 inches? Absolutely. Can it be, can it be 30.4 inches? Absolutely. So because decimals are possible, and again, the keyword here is that decimals only have to be possible. Here, decimals are not possible. Here, decimals are possible. So therefore, this is a continuous variable. All right, now here's a dot plot. A dot plot, basically what it does is it, uh, it has a range of values and it places a dot every time a particular value is selected. For example, the table below lists scores on test one in a particular class. So here's what these little dots mean. This little dot here, this is uh, 36, 37, 38. This means somebody got a 38% on the exam. This here is 60%. This means somebody got a 60% on the exam. So every time a score is recorded, you put a dot on that particular score. So 65, it looks like two people got a 65%. Now the question here for number one is what observation occurred the most? Okay, so which score was the most common score? Let's count the most number of dots. So two people got 65, two people got 68, uh, two people got 80, three people got 100%, three people got 95, three people got 93. However, the most common score, um, well, the score that occurred the most is 85%. Okay, so the most number of dots above a number is four dots, which are above the test score of 85. So the observation 85 points occurred the most. So each dot just represents a value. Each student who scored below 69 points uh, did not pass the test. How many students did not pass? So let's look at 69. 66, 67, 68, 60, this is 69 points. Anyone below 69 did not pass. So how many students didn't pass? Remember, each dot represents a student. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven students did not pass the test. Okay, there are seven dots to the left of 69 points. So seven students did not pass the test. Uh, each student who received at least 90, 90 points received uh, a grade of A. What proportion of students? Now here the keyword is proportion. It, it's not, we're not just asking for the number of people. We're asking for the proportion of people who earned an A. So first got to count how many students uh, received above 90. So, um, at least, so at least 90 means it could be 90 or higher. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we had 13 students who uh, earned an A on the test. Now to get a proportion, you have to divide 13 by the total number of students who took the test. Okay, so there are 13 dots and 90 points are above and a total of 35 students earned the test. So if we take 13 out of 35, okay, a proportion it, it's always going to be um, the number of people divided by the total. Same thing as a relative frequency. So 13 out of 25, uh, 20, 35. So 13 out of 35, this should be 35. 13 out of 35 is about 0.371. So the proportion is about 0.371. Identify new observations that are quite a bit smaller or larger than the other observations. So all these observations seem to, you know, be kind of in the same uh, same interval. However, this observation is way below all the other ones. So the sc whoever scored a 38%, this is called an outlier. Okay. Now, what are possible reasons? Again, this is just you can make up whatever you want, but uh, it could have been math anxiety, could have had a weak math background, or didn't study for the test, had a bad day, or, or, or whatever. Maybe they came in late and didn't get to finish the test. So there are a lot of possibilities on why this occurred, but this is called an outlier. An outlier is an observation that is quite a bit smaller or larger than other observations. And later on, we will talk about um, um, more precise ways of identifying outliers.